Now that we have covered issues common to geriatric horses, we're going to discuss the most common orthopedic conditions affecting horses in the therapeutic riding programs. The serviceably sound therapy horse can have a host of problems, the most common being arthritis. Arthritis is identified by a stiffness or shortness of stride, reduction in the horse's range of motion, and when severe, limping. Oftentimes, multiple joints are affected, although one joint may be more severe than the others. As a caretaker for therapy horses, you should be able to recognize signs of arthritic pain and do your best to manage it. This condition is not reversible, but it can be managed. Knowing the normal range of motion of equine joints will help you identify a horse with reduced range of motion. Don't forget, this also includes the neck and the back, as well as the limbs. For example, when the forelimb is completely flexed, the front hoof should be able to touch the horse's elbow. If not, then one or more joints in the limb likely has arthritis. Horses with hind limb arthritis will often resist picking up their hind feet, or they will lift them away from their body instead of flexing them when asked to pick up their hoof. And while it seems counterintuitive, some will even snatch the leg up and hold it in an exaggerated flexion. If a horse has normal range of motion in the neck, it should be able to bend the neck to the side while maintaining an upright hold. If, however, the horse has neck arthritis, the neck will twist instead of bending, resulting in a tilted pull with the cheek muscle pointing upward. Horses with neck arthritis will often seem stiff or lame in both front feet. These horses are prone to stumbling, especially if their head is pulled to one side abruptly. In addition to knowing normal range of motion, you should be familiar with the normal shape and size of the equine joints as abnormal lumps and bumps can often indicate arthritis. Soft tissue degeneration and injuries are also commonly found in the therapeutic horse population. This includes injuries to ligaments called desmitis and to the tendons called tendonitis. Tendonitis is more commonly known as a bowed tendon. The suspensory ligament can be injured acutely in, or can weaken over time, resulting in a dropping of the horse's fetlock joint. This is a painful condition. Additionally, the sacroiliac ligament connecting the pelvis to the spine can also be injured. This condition results in back pain. Horses donated to therapeutic riding programs often have hoof issues. One of the most common hoof ailments horses experience is chronic laminitis, also known as founder. Laminitis is an incredibly painful condition that typically affects the front feet of horses, causing them to shift their weight backwards onto their hind feet. When walking, the horse moves gingerly with stiff front legs, taking small steps with their weight rockered back on their hindquarters. Their discomfort is much more evident on hard ground. When turning, the horse pivots instead of crossing over with their front feet. This horse is much worse turning to the right than to the left. By the time the horse is donated to the program, the original insult causing the laminitis may be over, but mechanical changes that weaken the hoof capsule have already occurred. These horses have distorted growth rings on the hoof capsule, stretched white lines, flat and or thin soles, and rotation or sinking of the coffin bone. These feet are vulnerable to chronic abscessation. Each horizontal line in the hoof capsule is where an abscess ruptured at the coronary vein and then grew down with the hoof capsule. These horses need soft ground, corrective trimming and or shoeing or boots, nutritional supplementation, and pain management to be serviceably sound. You should be able to recognize signs of a laminitic flare-up and know how to treat it and avoid further flare-ups. Another common reason horses are retired from sport and end up in a therapeutic program is navicular. This condition affects the heel region of the foot. Both the navicular bone and the supporting soft tissue structures can be affected. These horses often don't appear lame, but they will take small steps with the front feet. 
lameness does become evident if the horse is made to circle on hard ground. Horses with navicular pain will often stand with their weight shifted forward over their front legs. Horses with navicular often have small feet relative to their body mass, with either contracted or underrun heels. When a heel is underrun, more forces are exerted on the navicular region, resulting in bruising and tearing of the underlying structures. While there is a genetic predisposition to navicular, the condition is exacerbated by poor or infrequent farrier care. In fact, many lameness conditions are caused by or are exacerbated by poor hoof care. Recognizing and correcting signs of hoof imbalance, removing flare, and providing the horse with appropriate footing for their condition is essential to maintain the long-term usefulness of the therapeutic horse. Horses may develop neurological deficits due to spinal cord impingement from arthritis or from infectious diseases such as EPM. Horses with mild deficits often can be used in a therapeutic program. Horses with neck or back arthritis, however, can have progression of the condition that results in their becoming unsafe to handle or ride. Stumbling, knuckling over, or swaying in the hind end should be evaluated by a veterinarian and most likely the horse should be retired from the program. So far we have talked about issues specific to the horse, but another significant challenge affecting most therapy horses is the budget constraints that limit management options. A program budget impacts the overall facility, the feeding program, and access to TAC professional services and staffing. Horses require regular access to turnout, which may not be available depending on the geographic area or facility design. Horses that are stalled or pinned for long times can have exacerbated arthritic conditions and or pulmonary issues if ventilation is not adequate. Arena footing can worsen certain lameness conditions if it is too deep or too packed. While it is not always possible to build new paddocks or drag and replace existing footing to accommodate the needs of an individual horse, recognizing these issues allows a caregiver to develop management and care-specific strategies for individual horses. Often, tack is donated, not purchased, specifically for the individual horse. Poorly fitting tack can profoundly impact the comfort and well-being of the therapy horse particularly with disabled riders who may be unbalanced. Depending on their age and metabolic condition, therapy horses may have special dietary needs. There are many diets and types of forage on the market. Depending on the program budget and local suppliers, the program may not be able to offer each horse the ideal diet for their condition. The program budget affects access to regular veterinary care, farrier services, and alternative modalities such as equine body work. While many of the horses would benefit from more regular professional care, many programs are forced to conserve financial resources for the most basic needs in veterinary emergencies. Budget also directly affects program staffing. Often therapy programs rely heavily on the volunteer workforce. Care quality can be impacted by the lack of continuity in volunteer skill levels and schedules. And this is where Equilibrium Institute aims to help. Knowledge is powerful. Many existing conditions can be ameliorated and crises can be averted when knowledgeable staff is caring for the horses.